Yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed. And like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So with that being said, man, go check it out, man. Be on high alert on Spotify and Apple Music. My Torta song is dropping any day now. Stream it. Promote it. Share it. Post it. Do whatever you got to do. I think this is the one for me. I think this might be my deal breaker. You know, I was being funny. Hook, you hook your boy up, man. So let's get right into this story. With that being said, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up. And you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel. Check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. Most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. So let's take it back to Fresno, Nickel Nickel 9. The area in which I used to go all around and mob and chill and do... Fresno, like I always said, and I'm always going to say, man, I love Fresno. Fresno was, was a good place to chill, have fun. People just love to go to downtown Fresno, hit the clubs, hit the scene, party. It's a big city. That city don't ever sleep. That city don't stop. That city gang bangs. I'll just, you would never just catch me on, like, like downtown Fulton, the, the mall down in Fulton. Nah, it was thugged out, bro. Thugged out. So we got a boot on. I got arrested. The boy was putting in work. It was, it was the, I don't know what he was doing. It doesn't have any allegations. It doesn't have any suspicions. All I know is he right now, he's in the county jail right now facing some hot ones. But we got a 28-year-old arrested on two, two, not one, but two hot ones. So the first one was actually a Sureño that was from Sanger. The Sureño's name was Saul Velasco. He was actually going to work. Just minding his own business, man. Just go clock in at a regular eight-hour shift. Just wanted to go make a little bit of money. Come home. Yeah, obviously, outside of work, he gangbang, did whatever he did from his hood. But on this night, this particular night, this particular day, he decided to go to work. And this bulldog that you see right here on the screen caught him slipping. Followed him to work. Waited till he clocked in. Went into the store and just shot him down. Gunned him down right there at, at, at a Valero's gas station. Now, that's cruel. There's like there was no sense of remorse in this crime that's being committed. You had no mercy whatsoever, and like I said, bulldogs they beef with everybody. So you know what kind of makes it makes you ask yourself, man, what, what to what extent was this man pushed where he decided to in in front of a camera, in front of everybody, where you know damn well you're gonna get caught. Bam, just walks up to somebody in a convenience store and just domes them all on camera in front of everybody. So sometimes situations like that, when somebody that has a I don't give a F mentality, I want to say it's more personal, but if it's not, and it was just a gang thing, look at how gang banging has gotten. People are going into liquor stores on bare face in front of a camera, just doming people. Then to top it off, he does that and he's driving a black truck. The black truck is still being investigated. They're still looking for it. They can't find it. You know, asking for any information. You know what I mean? You know how the cops operate when it comes to investigation. So he drives off in a black truck. He's already identified. What does he do? A few days later, catches another body. And this was a girl named Nicole. Now, they're saying that prior to the shooting occurred, there was a heated argument. Now, it makes me ask myself, what does it, what can really prompt somebody, a man, to argue with a woman and say, you know what? I don't like where this argument's going. I don't like what this argument's about. I don't like what she did. I don't care if the woman cheated on you with your best friend. I don't, and I've been, I've been hearing a lot of cases about a lot of individuals. Hey, but I didn't like that she started dating this fool. I don't like she started dating another man, period. I'm going to go take her life. That is the most pathetic excuse of an insecure man I've ever heard. Straight up. So whatever, like I said, whatever the argument was, they don't know what the basis of the argument was. But what does he do? He takes her out the game. Now, to me... I understand the concept of gangbanging, even though it's inexcusable. But to actually argument with, have an argue, but to actually argue with a woman and have an argument with a woman, and you don't like the way it's turning out, you don't like the way she says, or you don't like the way she got at you. Granted that some women don't know how to push men's buttons. Still, I don't think there's an excuse in this world. Well, maybe there's a couple. I'm pretty sure y'all can outline those, but I'm not going to talk about those. That'll make a man say, you know what? I don't like what she's saying. I don't like how she's getting at me. I'm going to dome her. And that's what he did. And then to top it off even more, he's still going on his shooting spree. What does he do? 
him and another Fresno Bulldog link up and they decided to catch somebody on the highway, another victim, shot him on the highway. Now they're being accused of that as well. So he's facing multiple, two that what he did prior by himself and one with another man. So we're talking about an individual that obviously had nothing else to lose. Obviously didn't care about nothing else in this world. And obviously said, felt like, you know what, I'm gonna throw my life away. I might as well take a couple of lives out in the process. So I don't know none of the circumstances for these three hot ones where he decided to say, you know what, I'm gonna take all three of these individuals lives. Because if you think about it, the first victim has the same last name as him, Velusco. So maybe it was an internal family thing, maybe it wasn't. I can't speculate on it because the articles didn't provide that. But still though, just to, just to read the article and see that this dude went on a shooting spree, taking people's lives. You know, to take somebody's life, man, you, you, they can't get that life back. And you can't give that life back. Once you take that life away, it's gone. It's not coming back. So you got to live with those consequences. And obviously, he's going to live with them because he don't know how to get away with nothing. So he was just blatantly doing everything in the open, not really caring if he got caught or he got away with it. And whatever the other bulldog got his involvement is and why he decided to get into the third one of a shooting victim on a highway and somewhere over there in Corcoran, kind of out of bounds if you ask me, still, dude took three lives. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people in prison right now that have taken somebody's life and swear up and down that they don't, they, they sleep well at night. They don't think about it. They're glad it took that dude's life, that it doesn't bother him, it doesn't haunt them. But I think if you're really human and you're a human being and you have some type of emotion, some type of soul, taking one person's life should affect somebody. Look at all the PTSD that a lot of these military dudes that, that have went to war, the Pakistan war, went to Iraq, have fought for the military, have been dropped off and had to take out enemies who were labeled, you know, certain things by the government. You know, they, re, they, re, they relive those things in their minds on a consistent basis. And that PTSD is there. It exists. It may be overlaid with a bunch of other thoughts and what's going on in life. But in the back of your head, PTSD is real. Trust me. I used to ignore it for a long time. But now I'm starting to see it every day now that I, my PTSD is coming out more than usual. But only because my circumstances have been getting a little bit more intense and more real, more in depth, more deep. I'm more of a target more than I've ever been in my life. So my PTSD and my anxiety does get the best of me. And I'm starting to learn that I need to somehow figure out a solution to my problem, how to fix my problem, because it's only ruining my life little by little stuff that I want to talk about on YouTube. So, but for a man to actually sit there on that bunk in a cell where all you have is your thoughts in a cell, you're locked up in the box. All you do in a prison cell all day is think. You can't tell me that this man at some point is gonna sober up real good and think about like, man, I just took three people's lives. He's gonna probably get the death penalty or if not, you know, get a life sentence. His chances of coming home are gone, gone, period. And I don't know if these new laws that are coming into effect where they're giving lifers opportunities to get out, you know, I don't know where if I'm for that or against that because I don't wanna see nobody in jail. But I do know like there's still some crimes that people don't, don't deserve any get backs from. Moreover, I, I would kind of hope that the life sentences, if they're going to start giving out life sentences for a lot of reasons or overturning them, there's some crimes that, that should be punishable with life sentences for these particular individuals and the crimes that, that they did towards these innocent little kids. You know what I mean? Those in it, I, I would root for that. Like, go ahead, give them life. Do whatever you got to do. I don't care. But reading this article made me ask myself, like, bro, like, what was going through his head? What was he going through? Because something pushed him to the edge where he felt like taking not one, not two, but three people's lives. And the two, like I said, the circumstances on the Corcoran one, I don't know. I don't know what that's about. It didn't say nothing about the victim. But I can't wrap my head around the fact that this individual just thought it was okay to get in an argument with the girl and just dome her. Take her life. For what? Over a stupid argument? Over some insecurities that may have played in a part? Maybe he was a jealous type. Maybe she was. Still, inexcusable if you ask me. Because trust me, ever since that law passed in prison, oh, the Mexican mafia's daughter got beat up by her boyfriend, so he pushed it into effect to have anybody get beat up, or, or checada, calentada, soft candy, hard candy, for domestic violent cases. Before that, it was even in effect. On the mainland, I was always taught to frown upon and look down upon and actually take care of matters when it comes to domestic violence cases. And these are talk I'm talking about just individuals who actually just put hands on the old ladies. I've never been a fan of that. 
and I actually beat up somebody on the S and Y because he bragged about it. Oh, what are you in here for? Oh man, I had to hit her with a pipe. With the, with the wool here is the paperwork. Look at her face; she's all bruised up. You know, I had to put in work on him because I didn't like the fact that he was okay. The fact that he actually put hands on a woman and hit her with a pipe in the face and decided to show his pictures in front of everybody like it was the coolest thing to do. I'm totally against a man raising his hand towards a woman. So you can best believe that I'm totally against a man pulling a trigger on a woman, no matter what the circumstances is. And I understand that women, like I said, they'll use their kids against another man. They'll do a lot of things to push a man's button. But I can only account for a few certain occasions where a man was, has probable cause to go pull the trigger on another woman. But in the article, typical argument, whatever the case may be, three hot ones in a matter of just two weeks. That's a dangerous society to live in. And that's dangerous people to be around. So I want to send my shots out to Fresno, California, man. I hope everybody's safe out there. I hope everybody's protected. Do what you got to do to protect yourself. And watch out for particular individuals like this. I'm not saying all gang members conduct themselves in the same fashion as these two individuals did. Or this one in particular who decided to catch three in a matter of two weeks. But I want everybody in Fresno, California to be safe out there. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one live, one chance. When they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.